So I came across a particular issue, one that can be very pertinent, very relevant to the everyday life of a Muslim. If you get a cut on your hand, for example, and you are bleeding from your hand, from the cut that you got on your hand, does that blood leaving the body, bleeding, does that break, invalidate, nullify your wudu or not? Are you still, can you just wipe up the blood, clean it up, and you are still in a state of ritual purification where you can pray or not? That's the question. And it's really confusing because I went online and I see that some people are saying that yes, it does nullify your wudu. And some are saying, no, it does not nullify your wudu. You just clean up, remove the blood, and you're good to go. You don't got to do wudu all over again. So which one is it? How can the answer be both yes and no? When it's one particular scenario, and it's about something as important as wudu, which you can't pray without wudu. And we're talking about the validity of one's wudu, ritual purification. I'm not going to use the word ablution. Ritual purification. So the answer is either yes or no. How could, I mean, I don't understand how the answer can be both. It's not possible. So I did a little further digging. And I found that there are some instances, experiences from the life of the Prophet ﷺ, from some of the lives and the experiences of some of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, that seem to demonstrate that bleeding does not nullify the wudu. But on the other hand, I came across certain quotes from the Prophet ﷺ, narrations, certain quotes from some of the companions, and some of their experiences where it does seem like bleeding would break the wudu. So how can there be, first of all, I was confused by the fact that there can be two polar, completely opposite answers to the same question. But how can there even be conflicting evidence on one particular issue? It's confusing. How do I make sense of all of this? How do I know what to trust, who to trust, what to do, what not to do? Well, there's a process to all of this that we have to understand. First and foremost, when we take these particular narrations and events and incidents, we first have to classify them and categorize them. Are they direct statements of the Prophet or direct actions of the Prophet or are they statements and actions of some of the companions? We have to differentiate between the two, categorize them accordingly. Number two, once we've kind of put everything in its proper bin and box, then we have to evaluate and scrutinize, is it authentically narrated? Does it reach us authentically, properly? Or are there some discrepancies in it reaching us? And once it, we finally evaluate whether it reaches us authentically or not, then we have to figure out the context in which each statement is being said or each action is occurring. And then we have to place them within a framework of principles that will help us process this information to understand, are they necessarily conflicting? Or are they just speaking about different circumstances? And if they're speaking about different circumstances, then how do we reconcile that? And if they are truly conflicting, <clears throat> then how do I know and how do I decide which one to give preference to? And finally end up with a conclusion at the end. So this is the process that we call usul al-fiqh. The principles of Islamic jurisprudence. Big fancy words, but basically the mechanism, the machinery that allows us to extrapolate, to derive rulings from the sacred text, the prophetic tradition, and the actions and implementations of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. How we can process all of that and arrive at conclusions and deduce an understanding. Now, the lack of that understanding and that knowledge is what causes a lot of people confusion and frustration. So, we here at Qalam decided to present a solution to that particular problem. An introduction and an understanding and an engagement with the structure and the rubric of this particular study and field in science. And that solution is called the faith intensive. 
taught and led by Ustad Abdurrahman Murphy. So what this will involve is students coming from far and wide, living, eating, praying, studying together for an entire week, an immersive experience and environment where we'll emphasize a very intellectual, honest engagement with our deen and religion and the sacred sources, while at the same time investing into the purification and spirituality of one's heart to create, to hopefully give the foundation to creating a more holistic believer. So inshallah, this July, come and join us for the Faith Intensive. We look forward to seeing everyone here in Dallas. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.